Okay, hello, uh, my name's Carolyn and um, I'm going to be painting um, this, sil this silicone baby. Uh, this is Effie, um, she's one of my sculpts and she wasn't poured by me but um, she was sculpted by me and she's going to be painted and finished off. Um, first of all, um, I'll just talk about the materials I'm going to be using. I use... Oh, before I say anything, I've, I've had a bit of a, a weird throat, so if I start coughing or my throat feel, sounds a bit weird, um, that's why. Don't, please don't worry, uh, I'm not dying, well I might be, but... Um, so I'm going to be using um, silicone A and B, which is the paint base. Now, um, a lot of people use Psycho Paint for painting all through the baby. I don't, sometimes I do, but but I don't always. I'm using Platsil gel. Um, one of the reasons I use Platsil, it, well, there are two, two reasons really. One is that it's um, softer than Psycho Paint. Um, and I am going to be doing a little bit of a, a tiny video talking about the softness of, of silicon to show you. I've um, I've got some silicon curing in the garden, um, a little sample of each of the different silicones that I use for different stages so you can see. Um, so I can show you about that, but for the, for now, um, I'm using Platsil gel. You don't have to, you can use any platinum silicone. So you can use uh, the silicone that the baby was poured in. So if the poured, baby was poured in Ecoflex 20, you can use that for painting. Um, the only thing with Ecoflex is the four hour cure time. And I think that when you add thinner to, to silicone, it slightly slows down the, the drying time as well. Uh, might just be my imagination but um, so that's that's I think a drawback because you're going to be building up the baby with several layers uh, and if you've got to wait four hours in between each layer uh, it's going to take quite a long time which is fine fine for some people um, I only get I work during the week so I only get three days to paint uh, four days to paint and, and do my my babies um, so <coughs> I don't want to have to be waiting around really um, for hours for the baby to, to, to dry. Having said that, in this warm weather, sometimes it can be just a little bit too fast, the uh, the Platzel. But we're going to start with this anyway. Also, it's a bit softer than Psycho Paint, as I say. Um, I use a very soft silicon for my babies. Not everybody likes a soft silicon, but mine is very soft. Um, it's a blend that we produce ourselves and called Mallow silic Silicon. Um, <coughs> so that that is another reason for using um, Platsil. So I'm just going to get started. The only thing you can't use on Platinum Silicon Baby is tin silicone. You can't use any any tin silicone. Um, so always make sure it's it's Platinum Silicone. Sorry, just had a bit of a coughing fit there. Um, the pigments I use, um, the the um, <coughs> the pigments sold by um, Smooth On are very good. Silk pig, they don't have a huge range of colour. Um, I use the sand pigments. This is silicone art materials pigments. Um, there are there's a vast range of colours, um, and I think they're just beautiful to use. So that's what I use, and we also sell a full range of colours on the website, um, makingsiliconbabies.com. Um, we're in the UK, we do ship worldwide, but if you're want, if you in America, you might want to um, source a, um, a supplier who's closer to you. Same in, in Australia or, or anywhere. I know that there's a supplier in America and there are different suppliers around, around the world. Um, but we, we do actually ship around the world, so if you did want to get some from us, that's fine. Um, I am going to be using the Sam Thinner. I've been using this for a short while now, and I absolutely love it. It's completely odour-free. It's very, very safe. Uh, you don't have to use a mask or anything when you're using it. And it's, um, it is designed for use with silicone. It has, a, I think, a slightly more oily texture than the watery thinners which I think is lovely but um, it, it's each to their own 
Oh, I've just realised I've got a little rainbow on my baby. Can you see that? A rainbow uh, just landed has, has landed on on the baby. I don't think you can necessarily see it. Can you see it now? That's got to be a good sign, hasn't it? <laughs> right. So I'm going to be using this odorless thinner, um, and as I've demonstrated in another. Uh, video the one on sort of repairing the baby before you start painting. Uh, I always decant my um, psycho paint, sorry, platzil into a smaller, a smaller bottle, so it's a lot easier to to handle in smaller amounts. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the thinner, because again, a squeezy bottle is a lot easier to manage than a, um, a, a you know dripping it from from an open bottle. So I'm just going to do that. Probably make a right mess. Um, I also actually wash my brushes in this. It's probably an expensive way of doing it. You can just use ordinary white spirit or um, odorless thinner, um, but, but I, I do it because I have it. But um, you know, as I say, it's it's perhaps a, a bit of an expensive way of washing your brushes, but um, you can do. So that's my thinner. That's my um, platzil, and this is my pigment that I'm using today. So we're mixing A and B of the silicone together, that's basically just silicone, adding some thinner to thin it down and we're adding pigment. Um, I'm starting with blue. Um, I, I, I probably overuse the colour blue in some of my painting because I, I do like the, the, um, the effect that the blue uh, gives to uh, um, the flesh. What, we, what I go for is not so much what reborn artists call mottling but just literally the, the build up of flesh um, if you look at the inside of your arm um, it's just a flesh colour but it's not a flesh colour it's built up of blues and greens and pinks and all sorts of things and that depth that you get if I just painted a flesh emulsion over my pe over my arm it would look like a statue um, or something something that was made in wood or something but if I but but if you can get that effect of just random colours um, throughout your baby, at the moment she just looks very plain and blank. She's beautiful, but she looks very, very um, doll-like. Um, by the time I finish this, she's going to look like she has living skin, living flesh. So what we're going for is a living flesh effect. Um, I don't do so much in the way of veins these days. I used to do more so and, and people see the veins and they say oh wow that's so realistic but when you actually look at a baby you very rarely see veins down the forehead. Um, you do see a little bit of veining on the temples sometimes um, or just a blush of blue where the veins will be where the skin's thinner. So what I'm going to do is to start with is using what I call the mottling um, applicators, these things which again we, we sell on the um, on the website um, they come in two, two thicknesses uh, these are brilliant for painting with these are really good for both painting with say in creases picking up um, paint you don't want and also I use them for sculpting they're really they're really handy um, I mean these are just like um, cotton wool bud size but they don't leave the fluff behind like cotton wood cotton wool does um, and they are so they're lint free and they are totally latex free. Um, when I did my reborning, as everybody does, um, else does I'm sure, I used sponges. And I have tried and tried and tried to find some sponges that I can use on silicone. And even the ones that you buy off eBay or Amazon that say latex free, I still struggle with because they, they have, I have trouble with them um, curing. But again, I've done a bit of a demonstration of that, which I'll show you in, in another um, video about um, hardnesses of silicone and the types of silicone and how they how they uh, cure um, and what affects them. So the main thing to know is do not wear anything rubber. Don't use anything rubber on your baby because what it will do is inhibit the cure. Um, so if I was to wear rubber gloves and I was to touch the surface of the baby and then paint over it with the platinum silicon it could have left some latex on the surface and the basically the platinum 
silicone will not cure, it'll stay sticky. Um, <coughs> that's what happens to me with sponges. Um, what I did was I first got um, some sponges that I said latex free and I painted the whole baby in them and the next day it still wasn't cured and I really struggled and then I got the sponge and it still hadn't cured on the sponge you could squeeze it and it was it was oozing um, it, has, it had cured in the pot so there was nothing wrong with the silicone it was a sponge so uh, I put the sponge in the oven tried to, tried to fast cure it in the oven and it was still squeezing and oozing out of the sponge so clearly the silicone that had touched the uh, latex or whatever it was on the sponge had stopped the, the silicone from curing and in the end I had made a right mess I had to wipe more or less all the, all the paint off the baby and I more or less ru well, I ruined the baby basically um, so always check first if you do prefer to use sponges that's fine but always always check your sponge first paint some um, of the silicone you're going to be using on your sponge leave it aside and when, when the paint in the pot has, dry, has cured, check that the, the, the paint on your sponge has cured. And if it has, then that should be fine. If it hasn't, then there's something not quite right and I wouldn't uh, risk it. Babies are too expensive and too precious to uh, take chances with. Okay, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put a teeny bit of each B and A. I, I usually try and do A first actually because um, that way if you get distracted halfway through which you know I do a lot I get distracted I can't remember what my name is half the time um, you, you know which one you've just put in um, so that's A and B being mixed there's not very much in there but I'm just doing a small amount it's such a warm day it's going to cure really quickly this so I'm probably going to have to mix it up in really quite small batches uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of blue now this is the cyan colour uh, in the Sam range. Uh, I think it's a lovely colour. It's a kind of slightly greeny blue, which I think is really good for for um, <coughs> shadowing and um, mixing, and also uh, just for um, the areas that you want you want um, it, it, some veining or or the effect of some veining deep down. That's quite. I just put one little drop in, um, and when I add the thinner. It should be it should be good these twiddle sticks are great for mixing um, but I find for mixing mixing in the thinner <laughs> you're better off going to a, um, a brush you can get an old brush that you don't want or that you that's got silicone set on it or you can just uh, grab a brush and make sure you you look after it I use fairly cheap brushes so if the if the silicone does um, dry on them and it does it does it all the time to me because I'm not very careful um, you put it down the next minute you think you realize it's it's cured um, you can just pop it in the bin <laughs> and uh, pick up another one it doesn't matter if they're only very very cheap so I'm going to have a little pot of the thinner as well for just cleaning off brushes Or whatever I need to do just just to have it nearby so as I say this is the Sam cyan I absolutely adore this color uh, this is these are the larger bottles um, I've got them in kits I've got some um, these some of the Sam Sam in kits on the shop in the shop for you to sort of try them out um, this size uh, but I've, I've just ordered some of the larger bottles of the more popular colors that I use um, so that if you, if if you, they they take they they actually last a long long time. But if you wanted to get a specific colour that you use a lot of, um, you're better getting it in the larger bottle really. And they last. This the, these large bottles last forever. I mean, I use a lot of the violet and magenta in my airbrushing on my coloured babies on you know the um, the chi, the 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 ones that are sort of like avatar similar to avatar colouring. I use a lot of the, the colours on those and they, they still last an awful long time. Okay, so what I have is um, the pigment mixed with a bit of thinner, probably about half and half I'd say, 
thinner and pig and and paint um it's kind of cream consistency double cream consistency i'd say you know that sort of sort of quite takes a while to sort of like go down from your your, your cup down it's um thick thinner than honey much thinner than a, a, th a runny honey but sort of like a cream consistency and what we're going to be doing is is dabbing um I'd, i'm not going to use any brush brushing t um or, or dragging i'm going to literally be be dabbing and as you dab um depending how hard you, hard you push it you can get some of the it's like a ring with the where it pulls it up in the middle so you or, or you can just get blobs and i'm just going to be dabbing around not too worried about the, the blobs touching each other uh, some will some won't but this will just give that sort of start to give the background of the of the um the calm the sort of like the depth of the color also the silicone to a degree moves spreads and it will it will change as time goes on but um as i say with platsil it 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 does dry quite quickly so it won't take too long i'm not worrying where i put it i'm basically just covering the skin at the moment as i go on i'll go over more in areas where i want more of a blue uh, effect but this is not for shadowing now this is just a background of of um I, i'm not going to call it mottling because it's not mottling it's 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 a flesh depth it's flesh flesh building up of flesh really um just watch for a little if you've not mixed in your color properly sometimes you get little blobs of pigment so you do that no matter what i don't think they are actually um, just make sure that, with, especially with the blues, that there are no little tiny little drops of um, pigment in your colour because um, they're very. Like, and again, like with the gen. Oh no, they were just bits. Like with the Genesis paints, the blue is a very very strong colour and um, should be used sparingly, really. But um, so basically what I'm doing is just blobbing, blobbing it around. Don't let it collect in the creases at all. You don't want blue creases. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. I, th I think I, ca I can hear that my voice is weird in my head. It might be coming out all right. Not that my voice is really all right any time. But um, and don't worry if you think, oh, that doesn't that looks too much so. You shouldn't be able to really see it, but it'll give an overall effect, if you know what I mean. I wonder if I can go closer just to show you. Go. If you can see too much sort of building up, blot it off. Uh, either with a sponge, you can. I mean, you can use um, other sponges, ordinary um, sponges with the ordinary silicone you know like bath sponges but they're not very they're not they're not very um forgiving really <coughs> so i'm just blotting away just like a little stippling And then leave some areas with flesh, with just flesh. Um, you don't have to cover everything. If you did, it'll just be all blue. So leave bits of uh, flesh as well. Because we're going to be going over this with other colours as well. How I paint my um, babies, I prefer not to paint one side and then turn over and paint the other side. Um, and then uh, in between each 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 layer because I always worry that when when it's on this other side the paint will you know come off or or be damaged by lying on its front before it's sealed and matted properly or at least matted um, temporarily so what I do is I'll do two or three coats on one side 
then I sprinkle some matting powder over it not while it's wet but when it's dry which make, which has the effect of sort of talcum powder but it stops it from sticking and you can you with both the the melting powders I use, which are the Sam one and the um, silicone velvet, you can use both of those as a kind of talc to stop it from sticking. I'm going to get a new uh, applicator because I've uh, picked up some dust on that one. It stops it from sticking uh, when you turn it over and also you can get an idea what the colour's like uh, while it's still wet and glossy as it obviously um, it, it dries glossy this um, the silicone so you can't really see what the colour is going to be like but once you put a little bit of powder on even if it's just in between coats um, to see what you're doing you can you can see it and and both both of the uh, matting powders I use you can actually do that I don't put a lot on but you can do it just to uh, and then paint over it because it's silicone based the powder it just adheres to the silicone on both both under it and over it. So the bits down here I'm watching that I don't stop it um, in, a, in a straight line where it's going to, I'm going to turn it over and then do the other side um, but after I've done a few coats of this. So I make sure it doesn't stop in a, in a line and um, I, I sort of blot out a little bit of it anyway so that it's it doesn't collect and when you see the baby when it's finished it's not there's not a sort of an obvious line where you've turned it over and started started on the other side um. so I'm going to just continue doing this off uh, off video um, and then I'll come back on a bit later. I'm just going to carry on doing the legs and the arms and then I'll come back on before I start doing the face. Okay. Okay, I've um, I've done more or less over the whole body. Um, arms, legs. Um, I've not done the other side of everything yet. I'm just laying them out doing this side and then um, I've done a little bit in the ball of the foot just to give it some depth um, and now I'm going to do the face so what I'm going to do is I think it's yeah I think it's good enough to use still um, I'm going to put a little bit in the ear just for some depth actually I'm going to mix some more up because it's starting to um, become a little bit as if it's about to cure. I need a teeny bit. So with the fresh blue, I'm going to just do around a little bit on the face, not a lot.
got some blue on my hand and it's uh, staining, it's it's going onto the baby. <coughs> Right, I'm just going to go and wash my hand. Let's see if I can get, yeah. Right. Okay, so I, again, as I say, just be really, really careful around the face area. We certainly don't want any, any blue marks. So if you see any as you do it, it's okay to do just dabs, but if you see any build-up of the blue paint, just remove it. I'm going to go slightly over the cheeks, but there's hardly any paint on my sponge here. And it's it's hardly, no t you, you can't even see it to the naked eye, really. I just know it's there. Because although we want a sort of smoother look on the face, it's still, it's still flesh and you still need a little bit of depth. Again, avoid the, the creases to a degree. Don't let it collect. Don't let any blue paint collect in the creases. Um, when I say blue, it's hardly blue now. It's, 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 just, it's just a suggestion of blue, really. Now I'm onto the forehead, I can do it a little bit more, more, more obvious, what well, I'm going to say obvious, more, more blue on it, because we want some blue, almost veining going on, so we can add a bit more blue to the temples and to the head. So the above the brow area where it where you usually get a bit of a an indent and the temples. Just adding a teeny bit to the lips because the lips do have a a blue hue beneath the the pinky pinkiness. We don't want the baby to look as if it's wearing lipstick. So I'm going back doing it just a, a teeny bit heavier on the head because it doesn't it, it's fine to have the head slightly mottled. Right, um before I finish I'm just going to add just a, a little touch of blue in the areas where you will get a bit more blue on the face um around the nostrils. Again, try and avoid it going into the creases, if you can. The little, I can't remember, I can never remember what that's called. The little bit that separates the... Uh... <coughs> you can also use the applicators for taking off um, when, you've, when you've maybe overdone it slightly. At the, at the top of the chin. The, and then on the inside of the eye socket. Okay. I'm 
All right, so I'm going to leave him now to cure, um, and then I'll come back and do the the next the next coat on his front. Okay.